Hey all, Alex here at your home of the music deep dive and today we'll be doing a review of the 2012 biography by John Batchelor, Tennyson, To Strive, To Seek, To Find. Alfred Tennyson, later known as Lord Tennyson, born the 6th of August 1809 in Somersby, Lincolnshire, died the 6th of October 1892 in Lurgis Hall, Sussex. Coming of age just after the deaths of Shelley, Keats, and Byron, Tennyson carried on the poetic tradition of the early romantics by publishing a litany of emotive, passionate works, both prolonged and compact. Not only that, but Tennyson also incorporated a command of verse structures, the likes of which hadn't really been seen before uh, in English verse. His ability to make uneven phrases ring out as if they were the most elegant sing-song-like structures imaginable uh, was so impressive that he actually became England's Poet Laureate in 1850. He would hold that role for over 40 years, the longest tenured Poet Laureate ever. His most acclaimed work was probably the Elegy in Memoriam A.H.H. from 1850, but his most famous work is probably the brief 1854 verse, The Charge of the Light Brigade. He wrote over 100 poems in his life, as well as several uh, plays towards the end of his life, and he remains one of the uh, sort of patron saints of English poetry uh, to this day. This book was written by John Batchelor, born the 15th of March, 1942, in Farnborough, England. An English professor at Oxford and then at Newcastle University, uh, Batchelor has plenty of experience writing biographies of popular authors. H.G. Wells and Joseph Conrad were both granted biographies during his tenure in academia, as were Mervyn Peake and the critic John Ruskin. The Ruskin biography is the only other one that seems to have been geared towards a popular audience, however. The others seem to be more interested in the artist's works rather than their lives, as so-called critical biographies often are. And truth be told, even this Tennyson bio has a clear critical bent that takes away from the actual person's livelihood at times, but I don't especially mind it here. Tennyson is a compelling figure from a mythos standpoint, but his actual life story is not among the most enjoyable that I've read during this uh, journey. He was a somewhat miserable fellow who treated a lot of close friends and relatives like shit, and it's believed he never entirely recovered emotionally from multiple personal losses that he suffered early in his life. Understandably, not a super stable mental situation, but you can't also endorse his actions either. And Bachelor is pretty forward about Tennyson's actions being reprehensible too, even if he does a good job at contextualizing the background in the early part of the story. And I think this approach also helps explain why Bachelor kind of latches on to any excuse to talk about Tennyson's poetry rather than his life. Once the poetry starts falling off in his later years in favor of his playwriting, which if you ask Bachelor, apparently was caught awful. Uh, the book sort of does a proverbial speed run towards the end uh, over the last 25 to 30 years of his life, uh, so we don't get too much time with uh, crotchety old Tennyson. But, unsurprisingly, a poet's biography written by an English professor has some fantastic uh, literary analysis in it, and Tennyson's life is brought into these sometimes as a way to speculate on what inspired those poems in the first place. Charge of the Light Brigade fans will be disappointed that it gets maybe two sentences of discussion, but many of the more substantive poems Tennyson wrote receive these very kind of caring descriptions that point out consistently how amazing the balance between emotiveness and technical ability is in his writing. These emotions are then tied back into the life experience that uh, Tennyson had, specifically his uh, personal losses that I mentioned earlier, and it helps the poems resonate both on a theoretical technical level and on a tangible human level. It's true that sometimes this makes the narrative feel like it skips from point to point at times, but it also manages to avoid being as dry as your standard academic biography. The descriptions are rather affecting and avoid kind of being drowned in technical jargon. I learned a lot from this book overall, and it's not one of the uh, longer ones that I've reviewed either. It comes in at a bit under 400 pages, uh, so it's manageable compared to the uh, uh, the Benita Eisler biography on Lord Byron, which I think is uh, in the 800-page realm. 
It talks about the flaws of the man while addressing his incredible, at the time unparalleled artistic output without making a huge point about doing that. So I respect it greatly as far as what it's doing, and I have zero problems giving it a recommendation, especially for, honestly, people who have never read Tennyson before. I think this is a very good starting point that will help you branch off into reading his different works. And that's it. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. As always, more reviews are to come. Tell a friend as well. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time right here at your home of the Music Deep Dive.